A new UN AIDS report has shown that its 2020 targets on the ailment will not be met because of the deeply unequal access to antiretroviral therapy and service disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The UN AIDS 2020 target is aimed at having 90% of the people living with HIV know their status. 90% of the people living with HIV who know their HIV status as positive are already on antiretroviral treatment and 90% of people on treatment are virally suppressed. However, this might no longer be visible as the report showed that decades of hard-won gains could also be lost if the world fails to act as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak. To speak to us on the COVID-19 situation and the impact on people living with HIV and AIDS in Nigeria is Gloria Ogodo, Association of Positive Youths Living with HIV AIDS in Nigeria. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you. You're very much welcome. While the focus is largely on COVID-19 patients, there are people who still live with HIV. Please tell us, how is COVID-19 affecting this group of people? Yeah, it's, um, it's a very big problem coming to HIV and AIDS in Nigeria because it affected us greatly negatively in terms of community commodity. Um, presently, yes. All presently right, now we have what... We... Hello? Go ahead, go ahead. Can you hear me? Okay. We have problem when it comes to second and third line drugs. We have shortage of drugs, especially the second and the third line drugs since December last year. And presently now there is no third line drugs just because of um, COVID-19 has um, affected the distribution of um, ARV treatment here in Nigeria. And um, coming to some of the tests that we do carry out it's very um, real for us to go to the facility also and get this medication and get this treatment. And coming to that, as of um, April last, this month, this year, when the lockdown existed, we have immediately, we have to have what we call community pharmacies among us to take those drugs down to the community. People that missed appointment, people that could not go to the facility to assess their treatment, people that don't even know where to go because of the issue of lockdown. And the thing affected us negatively in the sense that we run out of medication, that we don't have drugs to take. I could remember vividly when I went to the facility to ask for the second line drugs. They barely gave me two weeks. And in the guideline, we said the PLHIV who is living with the virus should be on treatment for like three months so that they will not run out of treatment. But this time around, second line treatment, they gave me for two weeks, two weeks or one month. Some people don't even have it at all. So the, we, it affected us badly that to the extent that we don't have treatment again in Nigeria when it comes to uh, second to third line drugs. As now they are giving people on DTG. Whether you're on first line, whether you're in second line, they placed you on DTG. That is the new regiment. With the Nigerian government, that that is um, the drugs that is cheaper, that is affordable for them to have. Are you and saying that it's not being... That are you saying, then, Gloria, um, are you saying that the government has not, you know, given any special attention to this particular uh, situation, to this particular group uh, since the COVID-19 outbreak? No. No. There is no special attention for people living with HIV and AIDS, especially when it comes to women and adolescents. Because you can just imagine an adolescent tested to HIV positive and they don't have medication. Most of us went on second line treatment and the second line treatment is nowhere to be found. We don't have it in the facility. And if possible, we got to have it in the facility. They gave you for one month. Uh, uh, the big facility like um, um, Payfax site, they gave us for two months. But hardly before you see some um, hospital that gave you drugs for two months, which is the second line treatment. The second line treatment they gave us for two weeks and it's not uh, encouraging enough because at the end long run, we don't have where to go. We don't have where to fall out. So how um, are you coping? On how HIV are you coping? People, we Gloria. are vulnerable to the virus, to the COVID-19. 
How are you coping? How are people in your community coping with these challenges that you have enumerated? Um, what help are you getting, if not from the federal government? Are you getting any help? How are you coping, basically? Presently now, I can't lay my hand on um, the government supporting us or foreign donors supporting us. Because um, let me just say 80% of treatment comes from foreign donor. Since the rate of COVID-19, things uh, are withheld back. So we are only man um, sustaining the ones we have before the lockdown or before the, the, the COVID-19 came to place. That is what we are surviving on. And if it happens that this drugs is out of stock, what happens to us? What is our fate? And forgetting that we are vulnerable to it because so many attention has been diverted to COVID-19. Forgetting that there is um, PLHIV working on the streets, even uh, to have access to the facilities to get their treatment is very difficult for us because you don't have the means to go to the facility and assess your treatment. So these are the challenges. COVID-19 has taken all the attention that we need as the presently now. In the, in we the certainly society. hope so that um... to support. I don't. We don't have. We don't have support. We don't have support for let's, let's hope that, that the no right agencies are watching. Even with the right. virus. And let's hope that the right agencies are watching and government will help elevate some of the challenges uh, your group is facing at this time. Do stay strong. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.